hi guys welcome to charities bubble you say your number one channel we have a new video that we're going to talk about but this is going to be a question that i'm going to ask you and uh, i need some feedback i need um like your views about it but first of all i'm going to talk about it and then we are going to see how that goes but before that my name is charities Ngang. goodness my name is Charity Nganga. This is Charity. <laughs> Let me laugh at myself because it's it's one or seven a.m. at night when I'm doing this video. So <laughs> maybe my mind is tired. So Charity Nganga, for those who who are new in this uh, channel, and I talk about the DV lottery, and um, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, remember the drill. Kindly consider subscribing. Always like my videos, guys. You know, that's what helps the video to be viewed by uh, many people. And that's the only way that you can give back to me. You see what I mean? So it's it's good, like, you know, it doesn't cost much to like a video, to make a comment. It's okay, guys. And uh, share my videos. And also don't forget to turn on the notification button so that every time I upload a new video, you can see it. Now, I want to talk about the DV lottery. And uh, specifically for those people who have won the DV lottery. Um, because I like to read and I like to know what's going on around. So I want to ask a question. What's a DV lottery? A DV lottery is something that you apply online and you win. It's like um, you have gone to for a lottery for money. Hmm? Maybe you give like maybe $10 and then maybe you can win a million dollars. That's, that's a, that's a lay example of a, of a lottery. But the DV lottery, what normally what happens, you give you a little bit of your information and then you are selected by a computer randomly. So what does that mean? It means that after you have won your DV lottery, if you qualify all the questions that they want or you meet all the requirements that they want from you, then you will be granted a visa. So it's as simple as that. That's DV lottery. When you did, you did your application, did you need, did you need a, uh, maybe someone to do it for you? maybe 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 or maybe not and that maybe not is because maybe you you you, are, you cannot be able maybe to write or maybe to you know to understand very well so you need some guidance um it's very very self-explanatory when you look at some of my videos when you go to the website travel.state.gov and i normally tell you guys that the information that i give here it's not my information i just like to relate so that someone who is out there and maybe they don't know about the, the DV lottery. Maybe they don't know someone can win the DV lottery and come in the U.S. and live as a U.S. citizen. They don't know that. That's, it's just like for me, I feel like I want to share because I have gone through that process. And uh, I'm proud like to, to live in the U.S. and I'm proud to be a U.S. citizen. See what I mean? So now my question is uh, for this video is that do you need a lawyer when you have won your DV lottery? Do you really need a lawyer when you have won a DV lottery? And that's why, first of all, I talked about what is a DV lottery. Because here we have a DV lottery, and of course, we have other different kinds of visas that uh, can be applied through the American Embassy when someone wants to come to the US. But here specifically, I am talking about the DV lottery. It's a lottery. So I want you to ask yourself do you need a lawyer when you win a DV lottery? And I need you to answer me, and I'm going to uh, just give you some, some, some things, some of the things that you are supposed to do after you have been selected, because um, it's a process. Like we normally say, you have done your application. You wait for five months, and then after five months, is it five months now? November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, April, May. Seven months. Six months. Yeah, six months. That's good. So in May, you check you have won your DV lottery. And then if you have been selected, the next thing that uh, they tell you is to whatever you're supposed to do, or they tell you uh, you will get maybe a second notification letter if your visa is available. And then when you get your second notification letter after your visa, your visa is available, of course, you will fill out your DS-260 after you have won your DB lottery, right? And then right now it's just being filled. You give all your information. And then after you have given all your information, when you look at the DS-260, that DS-260 form, uh, it normally asks you, were you helped by someone to do uh, the, the process? You can either say yes or no, depending on your own reasons. But still, when you look at the DS-260, 
it's very self-explanatory i have a video about the ds260 and i'm gonna find it because i know it's below all my videos and try to attach it to this video because i feel like it's important for you especially you who have won the dv lottery to know about the ds260 because you can do it for yourself what does it ask about it asks about uh, your spouse information your information your passport number your kids information if you have any kids and all that stuff guys so you have filled out your ds260 you have submitted it and of course when you're going to the to the embassy actually you don't need to print it out to take it to the embassy because the consular is able to access that information so you don't need to take it and then uh, they tell you when you get your second year 2nl depending on your case number and that's why we do the visa bulletins then you know this is the time that i am going for in my interview when you go for your interview normally what happens is if i won the dv lottery the way we went and i have talked to several people and that's what happens is that the people who especially after the bomb blast the people who are required to go to the embassy are the ones who go in so that is you who won the dv lottery if you have a family member if you have your kids only you are going are allowed to go into um into the whatever the interview area or inside the embassy to go for your interview whatever you are that's what happens because you find that uh, even when you come here in the u.s most things are very uniform they are done the same way so whatever they do here in the american embassy is what they are going doing in an embassy like somewhere in you know, a different part of the world they do the same thing so it's gonna be only you people who are who have won the dv lottery and the derivatives so my question is do you need a lawyer after you win the dv lottery because I don't think that you do. Because this is something that you can do for yourself. So you go in, uh, first of all, you go for your medicals, right? And when you're going for your medicals, they tell you if you if you if you have not um if you have not uh maybe you don't have maybe like good photos or although the photos right now you have to have them uh done very well, uh even in your application. And we've talked about that several times. So after your medical, then you would go for your interview, and it's only you. Even for the medical, it's only you and your spouse and your kids who go for those for that kind of stuff. And then when you go for your interview, they ask you questions, mostly three questions or two questions. And if if they need any more information, if they are not, if they are, if if your your DS two sixty corresponds with what you had done in your first application, you haven't added people. You haven't committed any crimes you haven't trafficked children you haven't uh, been on drugs or trafficked to drugs you're good to go because it's a dv lottery and then if you need any if you don't have all that of course you'll get a green card and you have fulfilled everything and uh of course if you uh if you, they need if they need additional information sometimes they may need some additional information um they will give you a yellow paper and they will tell you to go and seek that information. So it's only you, right? So I'm wondering, where does the lawyer come in with the DV lottery? Because I'm like, what's the, pur what's the purpose of having a lawyer after you win the DV lottery? Because I don't see any purpose. DV lottery, no. That's something that, that you can do for yourself. Follow the, the instruction, do it. Don't pay any, anybody some money. See, in the name of a lawyer that they are going to help you with the DV lottery. For what? Because they don't come in, guys. They, they just don't come in. Like it, it's, it's self-explanatory. It's a DV lottery. You know, you have won the lottery. Follow the instructions. And then after you have followed the instructions, do you know even you know even if you let me tell you one thing. Let's assume you don't understand English, or maybe you had a preparer or someone who helped you with your with your uh, to fill out your DS two sixty. Maybe it's a cyber person who went and helped you with that uh, DS two sixty and all that stuff. Or maybe they even helped you to fill out the DV lottery. That's just a preparer. And if you do not know English and you're going for an interview, or maybe for your, you're going for your medical, normally they are supposed to get you an interpreter. Them, not you, them. You tell them, I don't understand English. They will get you an interpreter. So where does the lawyer come in? Like, why do you need a lawyer when you have won the DV lottery? Because I don't understand why you need one. Mm, I, and I stand to be corrected. I'm not that those are my views because I know that um when you go to the website travel.state.gov, um, you find that you will find all the information, everything is self-explanatory. And even uh when they are announcing the development, right? because I know uh, people can be naive, and uh, that urge of coming to the US is so high, and you find that if you want something so bad, sometimes you fall into 
traps because there's people who are very intelligent who will take advantage of people you know what i mean you are someone who will be like oh uh, let me get you this or let me let, 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 let's pass through this, this way it's gonna be easier the DV lottery you do not need any lawyer even when you come here in the u.s you have come with your DV lottery and uh, you have settled you have gotten your job after five years you will need to go and get your citizenship guys you don't need to go with a lawyer you need to go by yourself actually normally what happens you go online you do an application when you do an application then um you pay then they're gonna send you um you, ca you can check on your web on that website or on, on the day that they set for your interview or they send you a letter on the mail they tell you that you are you're gonna go for your for your fingerprinting a specific day you go for your fingerprinting and then they give you a book that you have to study because you have to study 100 questions and master them and then they will uh they will let you know like the the time the day that you are going to do the test because you have to do a test before you come you become a u.s citizen you have to do an english test you have to do to ask to do like a civics test you have to know all that uh for you to be certified to become a u.s citizen so that's something that you can do for yourself that's you know like it's basic what i can say is uh that uh, the the english that they put there is the basic english even like a someone who is like sixth grade can understand and i remember uh when my son was because uh if you are if your parents and you have kids and I'm, I'm talking you know i like to be honest because for me i think honesty like goes a long way and maybe this video might help someone out there who has won a devil lottery and maybe they have a lawyer so i'm like why do you have a lawyer so um this one was i remember when you come with kids first of all the parents get their citizenship and then if you had come with your kids then you're going to apply for them after you have gotten yours so it starts with the parents so i do remember very well uh my son uh we did go online and then we did it as his application and everything and then it was a covid time so when he was going for his fingerprinting with the when the, his appointment came in he went by himself because he was driving and everything. He had done high school, so he was already 18. So he went by himself. Uh, you can imagine an 18 year old, right? He went by himself, he got his fingerprinting, he got his book, he came home, he read it. And then after he read his book, uh, they gave they had given him an appointment to go for the interview. He went for the interview because at that time, uh, during COVID, there was they were not allowing people to go in. So um, you just you just go in by yourself. He went by himself. He did his test, he passed, and then uh, they were given an appointment for the for the swearing in because you have to go, after now you have passed the test, then they'll give you a different date for you to go and swear, like you want to become a US citizen, whatever, whatever, all that stuff, okay? So still it was COVID. So uh, they were they were, they were were kind of opening for COVID, but we weren't sure because I remember it wasn't very far from the time that Ami and my husband had gone so uh it was still that COVID time and people were still scared and everything so the the letter that he we had received for him was saying that uh they are not going to allow people because even us when we went for a citizenship we didn't call anybody because only the people who were getting that citizenship were going in because you know the of the spread you know all that COVID stuff everybody knows you know so when he went he went um he went for um the swearing in and then um then when he was there i remember i had come from work and i was so tired so so i came from work i was like uh they said that we can't go so he went and he, he got sweared in and then he came home so what am i saying i am saying if an 18 year old went through that process by himself then why do you need a lawyer because i feel like you do not and um for my for me i liked um uh, when i started my youtube channel it wasn't for like i wanna get uh, some benefit from anybody or whatever for me it's just to do youtube for whatever you know just to make it more aware that uh, you can be able to fill out your dv lottery you can be able to do the whole process by yourself and you can be able even up to the the fifth year after you have come to the us to get your citizenship without paying any anybody a cent, just doing it for yourself. And you have to understand that, guys. You really need to. Because when you win the DV lottery, let's be real here, you will need a lot of money to process it. Like so much money, guys. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be a lot. And um, when you want to, when, when, when maybe someone tells you like, um, you need one, two, three, four, 
uh, and it's something that you don't need. And because of that, um, that urge of like wanting to do something right, then you, you go and do get an extra expense. Then I don't think it's fair. So, um, so ask yourself and learn more. Go to the website and learn more about the DV lottery. Like, watch the videos that they they normally uh they, they normally have, especially talking specifically about the DV lotteries. If you are thinking of filling a DV lottery, even like the 2024, the 2024, look at uh, the first day of the application and you find that there's a person who comes in and they do the announcement and they talk, they see that nobody is supposed to help you because it, that's their process and all that. Listen to that, guys, and it's gonna save you a lot of, a lot of. Um, I don't even know what I can say, but a lot of trouble. It's not trouble. Actually, it's trouble because um, let's assume like you are in Africa somewhere, Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda. So use Kenya shillings, or maybe you get the Uganda money or Tanzania money or whatever money. Now, when you compare that money to a dollar, you find that it's a lot. So most people, when they win the DV lottery, they don't have, they have, there are some people who are extremely rich. We are not going to deny that. But you find that the highest percentage, they struggle to get that money. So you find that, um, let's assume like you got the DV lottery. Remember you have, if you, if you, you have to go for your medicals and you have to go for your, um, your interview. It costs money, guys. It's, it's not, it's not, it's not cheap, especially if you have a big family. And uh, you find that the only leeway that they give you is that after you have gotten your visa, maybe you can travel first and then uh, your family can come later when you have settled. And most of most people, maybe when they are traveling, remember, go back to the video that I watched with Levy. He was very honest. He said that uh, when he when they won the DV lottery, he wasn't able to travel with his wife because he didn't have the airfare to, to pay for all of them. They came later and he had a, a, um, a host who was kind enough and uh, they were able to help them to uh, pay for the whatever, for the, for the AFA, which is kind and good, guys. So look at that situation. You're trying to, to uh, assemble the little that you have. And then there is this other thing that uh, maybe you, ha you had, maybe someone was talking about, or maybe you had like someone was saying, oh, this person is going to help us. You really don't need that. You don't need all that. When you win the DV lottery, this is specifically DV lottery, not any other visa, then you can process it by yourself. And I stand to be corrected, guys. I need you to make comments there and tell me uh, what you think about this. Now, when do, when would you need a lawyer? Because there are some instances that you would need a lawyer. Maybe, for example, uh, you did, um, for example, you, you live here in the US and uh, you want to petition for maybe a spouse or whatever, but you don't know very well how the process goes you really do not know how the process goes then you can you can get help from a lawyer maybe uh you came in here and uh, you have uh, you know there are so many immigration issues guys they're like there are so many and that's why i don't like diving into those stuff because it's a lot and uh, i don't want to give the wrong information here but at the dv lottery what i know is that you do not need anybody to help and of course, if someone helped you, they want you to tell them that someone helped me to fill out the form, the DS-260, the whatever. They tell you to tell them. So um, so it's good to, and that's why I normally say, when you watch my videos here, go back to the source, because this is not my information, guys. I just talk about it because I feel like um, there's someone who is going to get uh, some help from it. But go to the website. Read about that information, travel.state.gov, guys that's a it's a public website and then after that then you will know don't listen to hearsay and uh like i told you uh, when we won a DV lottery it was a while ago because now it's gonna be nine years in um uh, in may the people who were giving us advice were the people who had gone to there for their interview because they wanted um a student visa other people had gone for an interview because they were, had been invited, maybe for a graduation or whatever, and then maybe they were denied. So those are the people who are giving you the advice. That would be the wrong advice because that's a very different visa, guys. It's very, very different. Or maybe someone else was like trying to apply for a job and they were going through an agency, but they were not able to prove, you know, because there are some things that you have to prove, especially, and that's why a developer is called an, is it, is it immigrant? Immigrant visa. 
And then the others, they are called non-immigrants. Because this one, it gives you a leeway. You come, you get all the documents, you get work. And then after this certain time, then they can you can become a U.S. citizen. But if you come as a student, before you get that visa to come and study here, you have to prove to that consular beyond reasonable doubt that you are going to come and study and you're gonna go, you have ties. There's something that you're going to go back for home. But if you don't have that, then they are not going to give you. Those are totally different guys. Those are very, like totally different things, guys. And that is why, instead of asking and uh, maybe um, being in a situation where you, you don't, you are you're having something that you don't need, it's like what I say is like uh, maybe you have a, you bought a cup of tea in a hotel or whatever in a restaurant, and then uh, you you're not done, and then you want to get another cup of tea, like an ex an extra cost that you really don't need, hmm? and you know that you're not gonna finish that one and drink the other one, but you have spent money. So that's for me. I I'm like, do you really? Do you really need? I, I feel like you don't, and I stand to be corrected, and I need you to do those comments there. So, um, so think about it. Go and seek the right information, guys. Go read the website, and uh, be proactive, guys. Get to know people. You know, connect with people because there's some people who are really good and who can go out of their way and help. Hmm? There are some people who can go out of their way and help, and. Uh, Actually, you don't even really need someone to help. After you have won your lottery, everything is in that paper. Read it. It's in those, those letters, those emails that they send you, they have everything. And that's when you come to live in the US, it's the same thing. You find that everything that uh, is required for something, it's there. Sometimes it takes, uh, it takes uh, different ways to understand some 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 people understand faster others do not understand faster which is okay it's fine we are not we are born very differently and we can never be the same but at the end of the day what i need um if you have won a DV lottery or you are anticipating to get one it's very very important to read know about yes you have had i know that there are some people who will watch this video and they will know about the DV lottery today but then go read more about it find out what is it and uh, what, uh, like, like, how does it go? Because you'll see the process. You'll see, you know, you'll see. They have videos, even YouTube videos. You know that website. Read them. When you see a video like here, like the one that I am doing here in YouTube, go and verify that information if it's the truth. In, the true information that I am talking about. So it's very, very important for you guys to know that, so that uh, you do not fall into um, a situation whereby you are incurring an expense that you really don't need. Because normally what I know or how a lawyers work is that if you hire one right now, let's assume I have hired a lawyer for a specific thing. It doesn't matter what it is. Because I have I have given that person a job, normally what happens is that they 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 send you like some some invoices or all that, you know, some some money that you're supposed to pay because you know you have you have given them that one. Even if they have not like done much, you know, whatever, they will still send them those ones because you, what can I say? It's like a, it's like a promise. It's like the way, uh, let's assume uh, this, I think this is a very good example. I like to give an example. It's like um, you go to school, right? And you say that I am going to come to this school and you pay your school fees, right? When you pay your school fees, um, and then you decide, then you are not going to go to that school. There's a part of money that they can refund for you, but there's a part of money that they really cannot refund, especially maybe the admission fees and all that, the people, all, all that paperwork fee and everything. Maybe they, there's a part of it that they will return to you, but there's a part that they cannot return to you. So it's, that's like the how the, the how if you hire a lawyer works, because they have like a standing fee, like if anything happens, then... Um, if you have contracted with them or whatever, then you have like to do like, it's like a maintenance fee that you have to pay. You see what I mean? So it's very, very important for you to know that after you win your DV lottery, you can do it by yourself. By number one, reading. By number two, trying to understand the process. Uh, by number three, going to the website and learning more about that type. Even if it's not a DV lottery, even if it's any other visa that you're going for, a student visa, Go read what they require. Maybe they require a bank statement. 
for such amount of money that um, is going to show that you're going to be able to be comfortable, pay for your school fees, pay your hostel fees and all that. You need all that. Very, very important. Hmm? If it's a spouse's visa, let's assume it's as you, maybe you want to marry someone or you have a fiancé or whatever. Go look at what they require. Because you find that, uh, what I know is that if you go to the embassy and they ask you for something, maybe they tell you this is what you, we want, it is in their requirement paper, that menu thing, whatever, that paper, the instruction paper. It's there. If they ask you for it. So whatever that they have asked for, go get it, put it in order. Maybe they want one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Put everything in order. And then put it in a folder. So that if they ask for, I know where it is, paper number one, number two. Sometimes even you can even write a table of contents. The, number one is my passport. Number two is my marriage certificate. Number three is my bank statement if you're looking for a different type of visa. That way you know. So look at, read. I told you guys um, that uh, I've learned so much when I came to live in the U.S. because um, I've learned the importance of reading. And right now, normally, if I am doing something and uh, I'm talking to someone, especially, if, let's assume it's a, a, the line of work, especially if I'm at work, and I receive a phone call from someone, I normally have a paper. All the time I have my pen and I have a paper I am writing down in a note, in, in a sticky note. And then that sticky note, I I put it. If now, if you look around my computer right now, um, I normally have so many sticky notes that I have stuck on my computer to remind me that I need to do this. Or maybe I received a phone call about this and this and this. It's the same thing. That's how US works. So if you ask for something, then you ha it has to be there. And if it's not there, they will ask for additional information. But if you if he says if he doesn't say in that DV lottery thing that you require a lawyer, then don't get one because it's not there because it, that you don't need one. So I felt like I would talk about that because I feel like I feel like it might help someone, and uh, it's always good uh, to um, to know and to be wise because uh, you find that if you're not wise, you end up like falling into into situations because for there's freedom of speech guys so if i come here and uh, in my youtube channel and, and i talk about something there's freedom of speech unless if i am talking about something that's bad or whatever even like youtube it normally it has control measures let me tell you so there is no way i'm gonna come here i'm talking about uh maybe maybe violence or whatever they're not gonna post that video they, they won't post it like if it has anything about like they don't that is not according to their policy it's called a policy then and they ask you and you ask you ask you have to answer if, truthfully because before let's assume you are uploading a video uh if it has some information that they, they it's not in their policy or is is bad or whatever maybe you have done copyright let me talk about copyright maybe maybe someone did a song and then you want to do um a video and wanna you want to put that one as your background so so on and you and you want to put it uh, on youtube without the rights they are not going to publish that and if you continue doing that, they are going to give you a strike. That's how it works. So it's the same thing. There are those policies. So those papers, when they have those, what they require, they ask you for stuff depending on your policy. So if they have not asked you for a lawyer, then you don't need one. So don't look for one, guys. Hmm? And uh, I would like to have comments for the people who have won the DV lottery because they are out there. Either DV 2022 who are processing. I would like to hear your feedback and tell me like uh what do you think because i think it's wrong and i think it's misinformation uh that you have it those are my thoughts and uh so i i thought that i could talk about that just to put it out there <laughs> you know put it out there so guys i only i i wish you all the best in whatever that you're doing and i wish you it's december be careful guys especially uh you know uh in december people like to go home and uh, they're traveling other people, they are drinking or whatever. Don't drink and drive. Do not drink and drive. And of course, you know, I was watching this video. <laughs> it's, I think it's a TikTok thing that I was watching and it was saying that um, when uh, the people who live in the urban area, they go to the village, they know that uh, they can, they, they, they don't have, um, 
uh, people to go and work for them. So they need to go and do the, their stuff. So when you go there, uh, make sure that if you're going with the toys, you're buying toys even for the kids who are there, not only your child. You know what I mean? If you go there, don't, you know, there are those nails that are very long. Mine, I keep them short because I am a nurse. <laughs> if I paint mine, then maybe I'm not going to work or something else is going on. Uh, don't paint those long ones and expect that people are going to, you know, scrub the sufurias for you because you come from the urban areas. No, don't do that, you know. It's good to respect our roots. Very, very, very important for us to respect our roots. So, guys, I wish you all the best. Thank you and God bless you.